So here it is, my 1969 CT70 Resto Mod uh, build complete. If you guys followed this pretty short build series, it started off as a full restore, but once I got to the motor and tried to actually drive the bike around with the 72cc engine, I decided that it wouldn't be something that I'd actually ride around if I kept it uh, in that state, so decided to go with the Life in 125 motor like I did for the last two bikes. Also like the last two bikes, I did powder coating uh, from a company called Precision Powder Coating here in Melbourne, Florida. They do a fantastic job for a pretty reasonable price. The wheels are original. I painted them myself. The tires came uh, from the bike in really good condition, so I left those as is. The fenders are OEM Honda. The handlebars were reproductions from CHP Motorsports. The seat was also a reproduction from CHP. I've been trying out a couple of different gearing setups. The gearing that I settled on is a 16 tooth front sprocket and a 35 tooth rear sprocket. And that seems to give me the best balance between power and top speed. Top speed I'm getting on this bike right now is about 60 miles an hour. This bike actually, the carb that came with it when I first set it up was bogging quite a bit. So I took it apart and rejetted the carb. It came with an 88 and trying out different jets ended up with a 96 jet giving me the best uh, performance. And again, a higher top speed than I've had in, in previous bikes. But something to be mindful that the jetting in the carb that comes with the life and kits aren't necessarily matched correctly. Everything was changed to a 12 volt power system, so the bulbs had to be changed. I bought a complete wiring harness from Trail Buddy that was set up for the earlier bikes that don't have the turn signals, so there aren't too many extra wires running throughout the bike, but it made it much more convenient to set up the 12 volt battery. A few of the pieces, like the triple tree, I decided to paint myself. But a few of the others that I tried to start off painting, like the plate that goes around the fuel tank, I noticed actually after the first time that I tried to fuel up the bike and spilled a little bit onto that enamel paint that had looked good originally, uh, came off pretty quickly. So I decided to powder coat that. I also powder coated the seat bracket and a couple of other high use areas that I wanted to prevent from getting scratched or have the paint fail due to chemical exposure like gasoline. The rear taillight bracket and headlight bucket are also reproductions as is the Nippon Seki speedometer. One thing that I've noticed with the speedometer, I can't decide if I'm gonna change it or not. The readout shows in miles per hour, but the actual odometer is ticking up at a rate that I assume it's actually in kilometers. This was probably a kilometers per hour speedometer that they just put a new sticker on to reflect miles per hour in the correct segments, but that it's still counting the odometer in kilometers. I can always convert it back if I need to, but it would be nice just to have all of that correct. I registered the bike in Vermont like I did the other couple of bikes and the plan is to actually get it titled and registered here in Florida. I'm just waiting for the local tax office to open back up so that I can do that. But it's a pretty simple process. I bought the bike without a title, but through Vermont, you can register the bike since it's older than 15 years and less than 300 cc. And I'll put some information above on another video I did on how you can go through that process. Once I decided that it wasn't gonna be a restoration and that I went with the Life in 125 engine, I got to take some other liberties that I was excited to do. I put on a TV parts exhaust that performs quite a bit better and I think just looks much better overall. I also added a mirror onto the handlebar just because it's more convenient if you can see behind you and I didn't want to put the full on side mirrors just because I think it takes away a lot from the front of the bike if you do. But the single mirror on the handlebar seems to be pretty effective and is good for the riding that I'm going to be doing on this bike. I put on new brake shoes both on the front and the rear and the stopping power is pretty good on these. The control system is actually kind of interesting on this bike. The right lever is front brake, the left lever is rear brake, and the foot pedal is still rear brake. This is the first time though that I've set up all three of those brake controls, and it's a pretty intricate system that the braking system uses, but it all works pretty well. The throttle control works correctly and springs back the way that it should. That took a lot of filing and small adjustments, and also made some changes to the spring to get that to work the way that it needed to, but I like having the integrated cable into the controls, and it just looks a lot more authentic. Uh, to be able to have it like that. So I know this was a pretty short build series and it wasn't very detailed and I apologize for that, but having done this bike now uh, for the third time, I knew everything that I had to do and it was a matter of just going through those steps. So a lot of attention to just getting it completed. But hopefully in the next build, I'm gonna do something new where there's a lot more interest and uh, new things to learn. And I'll detail every step quite a bit more. But for now, I'm just gonna put some miles on this bike and enjoy riding it. Like the last couple of bikes, it's not explicitly for sale. And with the current state of things, it's nice to just be out cruising on a bike like this since we're all supposed to be spending time by ourselves and away from others. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Hi.